Good evening, <laughs> everybody. Uh, uh, welcome to uh, Ghost Live. Uh, our wonderful finale just happened, and I want to start by saying how incredibly grateful I am that you guys showed up in such incredible numbers. Um, again, I actually don't know the numbers because <laughs> Stars hasn't told me, but I can tell by uh, how people are um, tweeting and how and it, Instagram and everything. Thank you so much for social media because I know that the real, the real thing is the fans. Like that's what's real. Everything else is like, you know, smoke basically, but you guys are it. You might be asking yourselves, why is she dressed in black lace Valentino for this occasion? Well, it's because we're here to talk about some funerals. <laughs> because as usual, we killed a lot of people. Um, and so, uh, yes, whoever just said power never ends, that is correct. Um, and so I'm here to talk about some, some deaths, for sure. Uh, and I really appreciate all you guys who are saying such lovely, wonderful things because it's really super important. Um, you know, we, uh, we fought for this show. It was not, people did not believe in it. People thought that the show could not work because why would anybody watch anything about Tariq? And you proved them wrong. You guys did that. I, I didn't do that, you did that. So I, I just wanted to say again, so grateful. Um, and I won't be answering any questions about force, just so you guys know, just so I say it like up top, this live is not about force. This live is actually about Power Book 2, Ghost. But what I will say about force is that, thank you guys for watching it, super excited. Uh, and as I've said, uh, why, um, uh, one thing that I definitely wanted to say was just how happy I am for, for Joseph, who is amazing and was amazing in force. So there we go. Uh, I'm going to answer a couple questions. Someone asked me, and I've seen this question a lot, and I, I just want to remind you guys of something. So a lot of people said, why not let Zeke confront Monet before he died? He did confront Monet. In episode nine, when he's sitting there with Mecca and her, he says, did you have something to do with Carrie's death? She straight up lies to his face. So it would have been a double, what we would call a double beat. Uh, so that is the answer to that. Okay, I'm going to get started on some questions, because as I, a lot of you guys probably know, we have a special guest uh, tonight. And so I'm going to get to some of your questions before we do that. Um, and some of your comments, because I really appreciated things like every girl dream DLK. I love how everything came full circle in the finale. Thank you for doing a tremendous job. I appreciate that. Uh, the Jack underscore asks, so just to be clear, the only way Mecca knew Tree killed Ghost was because of Blanca. That is correct. That is correct. And you are paying attention. That is correct. Um, because obviously Monet didn't tell him that she wouldn't have told him that she's the only other person who knows. Okay. Let's see. Uh, just B and J says, why am I leaving? Again, just so everybody knows, um, I am now working at Netflix and developing new shows. And it was time. It was time for me to move on and do something else. Um, I've said this in interviews before, but I am happy to explain it again. The job of putting the three shows on the air at once during COVID was just air traffic control. It was just like uh, budget talks and like, are we going to build a set? How are we going to do COVID? It wasn't writing. It wasn't writing, it wasn't creating, it was all this like pressure. And I didn't wanna do it anymore. I, I have to be honest with you, I didn't wanna do that part. I just wanna make stuff up. I'm a writer. I love you guys and I love coming up with things and putting them all on was like, you know what, at some point you do have to think about self care. And now that I'm at Netflix, I get to come up with new stories. Um, E-Money underscore ADR, why y'all kill Mecca? There was a lot we wanted to see with that storyline. I appreciate that you wanted more of Mecca. Daniel Sanjata is amazing. I'm not gonna lie, he's so great. But the reality was that the show, uh, it needed for Monet, who is a main character, right? Monet needed to have to make a decision about whether or not she was gonna choose herself and what was probably best for her or what was best for her family. So she chose what was best for her family. She chose a little late, a little late, and uh, therefore she suffered you know, some pretty huge consequences, which we'll see play out in season three. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, okay. Oh, she loves Bennett. Why exclude Carrie's or Lauren's death scenes? This is new considering y'all used to show them. Well, actually, we never, we didn't show everything all the time. We did hold back on some things. And in fact, that's why a lot of power fans are like, where's Ghost and all those things. Because sometimes we did uh, share, share things or not share things. Um, I know a lot of people... Uh, thought, uh, for example, that Angela was still alive because the way that she died was technically off camera. She was in surgery and then died. Um, so, you know, it can be, it can be a bunch of different things. At least that's how I remember it. Maybe I remember it wrong. Okay. Um, 
A.M. Mo uh, underscore says, uh, how has Sax survived being dirty and knowing way too much information since book one? Um, Sax has survived. Well, okay. So there's a, a bunch of different reasons. Let's start with the beginning. From the beginning, uh, Shane Johnson came in and he murdered this part. It was not supposed to go this long. I definitely did not see this character from the beginning living this long. But what happened was Shane was so amazing and then the character became so adaptable because he really wasn't um, a person with principles. And you know, I love love to write about people without principles <laughs> so that's why it became more interesting i always like that push and pull of cops and robbers and you guys know or a lot of you probably know that i came up in legal television i was a, a law uh writer so i love lawyers i love to write about lawyers and so that's why sax has uh, lived so long he also does know way too much information which is perfect for us because that gives you threat i think a lot of times people are like why don't you kill the people who are up against street but then there's no show because there's no one for him to push against or or work from. Um, okay, what do I mean she lied? Zamu, so uh, this is in episode nine. Monet looks at uh, Zeke right in the face and says, I had nothing to do with, with Carrie's death. Um, she says, I came straight here to be with Mecca. And Mecca says, that is correct. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, a lot of you are asking the same question that I'm not answering. And by the way, if, if I don't answer your question, it's not that I didn't see it, it's that I not answer your question on purpose because I can't. For those of you who are all asking the same question, I think. Okay, so, um, okay. Um, oh yeah, for Devonte Huntley, Gianni Brayden already told us he was coming on, so you don't, no need to think to keep the, the secret. I'm not keeping the secret. Yeah, I know it's Gianni's coming. <laughs> And he's coming soon. Okay, great. All right, so let's go. Let's see. Um, okay. Um, okay, lots of you guys who are... <laughs> Jada, Jada, Jada says Mecca was too fine to pass just like ghosts. I'm sure I will tell, uh, I will tell Daniel Sanjata that you said that. Uh, let's see. Oh, KB underscore show pony 74. Snitches never live in the power universe. That is correct. We do have, I mean, those are the rules, right? If you snitch, I mean, just like Spanky. I love Spanky, but he, he ran his mouth. He had to go. So multiple people always have to run, have to go. And by the way, Mecca was the goat of global snitching. Like he needed to go. He, he definitely did. Oh, I see Woody's in the building. Hi, Woody. Uh, okay. So, all right, let me go back. Um, Oh, uh, let's see. I want to make sure that I, um, okay. All right. So, um, uh, Met Met Farad, uh, asked, I want to say thank you for your work and how did Bianca, uh, I think he means Blanca become DEA. That's a great question. Well, she got fired. If you remember, she got fired from her job because of what Sachs did to her. <laughs> so she went off and joined another branch of law enforcement. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, Cree Tara asks, why didn't surveillance in the lobby catch Monet entering or leaving the building? We didn't say that didn't happen. What we're showing is that Blanca recognizes Tariq off top. She wouldn't necessarily recognize Monet, Monet Tejada. We're not playing that the Tejadas have actually been, um, like Lorenzo himself has been jailed for manslaughter, but we haven't actually been playing that there's a, a DEA investigation into the Tejadas. We have not played that yet, okay. Um, Jenny Jenks, when will a series be created from power with a female breakout lead? I would love to do that. Um, the closest we have come, to be honest, has been Rock in Raising Canaan. For those of you who are watching Raising Canaan, that performance by Patina Miller is everything. That's the closest we've come to really having a female lead. And it's just the way that the, the shows kind of broke out. Um, because Tasha went into witness protection, there really wasn't a story to tell there. And, um, other than that, I think, you know... Because I'm leaving and going off to Netflix, there probably won't be another spinoff that is about a woman, but I don't know. I think you guys asked me a couple weeks ago, who is like the person you'd want a spinoff for? And if I was staying and I was gonna do another one that wasn't uh, influenced, I would probably do um, Effie. Okay, uh, Debossadem, I love your name, Debossadem. I'm gonna take that. How did that snitch Ev survive this season? He caused more trouble than anybody with his mouth. That's true, but he also caused some other good things with his mouth. Let's see, you know, I don't know. What I would say is that uh, Ev may not live forever. You know what I mean? He is a good person. Um, okay, let's see. 
I'm glad that a lot of you guys noticed that uh, the um, the Davis and his brother, Davis and Theo thing, that Sachs does know that the actual killer was four inches taller. A lot of you guys are paying attention. You understand what I'm doing. This is great. Um, okay. Let's see. I'm him, 1995. How does Tasha get away with all her dirt, but when it comes to ghosts, he had to pay the price? Well, has she gotten away with all of her dirt? She lost a daughter already. She's in witness protection. She can't live her life. I'm not sure that she's gotten away with much, but that would just be me. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, three NFL, we need a Davis, Tate, and Sachs spinoff or just political crime fighting show. I would love that. I would absolutely love that. A lot of you were saying Sachs, Sachs has to go. Poor Shane. <laughs> Y'all are coming for him. <laughs> okay. Oh, this is a great question. MD Johnson Jr. Who do you think the better lawyer is, Davis or Proctor? Um, it's interesting that you guys have been asking this question, like Proctor is the goat of all the lawyers. He would get people out, et cetera, et cetera. I just want to remind you guys that Proctor did wear a wire on Ghost. He told him about it, but I do want to remind you guys that Proctor was also complicated. Um, all these characters are complicated. To me, Davis is a different type of attorney. Davis is the person who is the showman. He is the person who, he's kind of like the Don King of lawyers. Uh, that's a little bit different than what Proctor does, but I don't think one is better than the other. Uh, I just think they are, have different, they have different ways of doing it. The other thing I would say too, is that Proctor and Ghost became friends in a way. Um, I think that might be what you guys are reacting to. Whereas Davis and Tariq are not peers. They're not the same age. So Davis's attitude toward Tariq is like, where's my money at, kid? And I think I love that. You know, I love that about him. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, can I make the episode longer? Oh my God. Okay. So I'll tell you guys something. I overwrite these episodes so much. There are so many deleted scenes, things that we never make to air that I have to pull out of the show or we shoot and we can't have them because I have, I just overwrite. So I wish I could make the episodes longer, but they're actually only supposed to be 58 minutes and 30 seconds. Uh, okay, let's see. Um, was Kane, Rel D. Uh, I have a soft spot for anybody named Rel. Was Kane really trying to kill his father? Well, here's the thing. Yes, Kane didn't want to kill his dad, but Kane had been had two kind of things happen to him that were really important. One, which is that his mother convinced him that it was her or his dad. And you know how he feels about Monet. Y'all know how Kane feels about Monet, right? But he is, he's just his mother's son. And then the other piece of it, of course, and I think a lot of you guys memed this, which I thought was so great, was that uh, he is, um, he was like, no, I'm not gonna do it. And then she was like, well, Tariq killed his dad. And then he's like, okay. <laughs> so uh someone asked will Tariq still attend college since he was there to tutor Zeke we will address that in season three I miss Spanky I love that uh I thought he was great um let's see um uh, uh. okay I'm glad that you guys some of you guys liked uh that Blanca was back not all of you some of you did not like that Blanca was back I saw that on Twitter too uh so What's up with Davis's brother? He is um, dealing with some medical problems and you'll hear more about that in season three. Um, A1 Hardy is Big Guap dead or still in jail? Big Guap is dead. Uh, okay, we do have to talk about Diana, Mil Diana, by the way, because a lot of you guys are really angry at Diana. Do you guys really think that it's Diana's fault? Whose fault is it that Zeke got killed? That's really my question. That's my question is whose fault is it? Because I think one thing and a lot of you guys think another. Oh, hi, Chris Lofton. Chris Lofton, who plays Gennard on uh, Force, just is in the building. Uh, he's such a great actor. Uh, let's see. Effie should kill Tariq then get her own spinoff. Oh, y'all would be real angry at me. And you'd be blowing Alex up. <laughs> Poor Alex. That would not work out. I don't think that would work out for her. Um, let's see. Uh, LXRD franchise. Uh, is Tariq's character going to develop to be more like his father Ghost and he starts leaning more on his memory now that Kanan's memory more than that Kanan's memory? Um, I think Tariq is going to become more like Ghost. He's going to try not to, but I think that that's something that's like very hard uh, to avoid. Uh, and that's what I'm always writing about. Just so you guys know, I'm always writing about the, your, our inability to avoid um, being who we are. You know, hi, James Hussman. Uh, Jane Sussman, who works on Ghost, is in the building, uh, one of the writers. Um, yeah, so let's see. 
The 38 special brown handle, was it Tariq's that Monet used? No, it was not. It was not. Uh, okay, just making sure I'm not missing anything. Um, how many seasons left? I actually don't know the answer to that. That is up to stars and to you guys. If you guys keep watching the show, I think it's going to be very hard for them to, <laughs> to cancel it. Uh, but I'm not going to lie when I say that uh, our show is very expensive. And so the only way that the show actually stays on the air is from you guys watching it. That is literally it because it is expensive. I had someone say to me, um, kind of as a threat, like, you need to make the show less expensive. And I was like, okay, do, do I get to have less viewers then? <laughs> so they didn't like that. Okay. Um... Hi! Courtney! <laughs> How are I you? Saw, I saw the outfit right when I started, and I was like, damn, I got to go to Celine quick. I'm underdressed. <laughs> I'm... I'm dressed like this to honor the dead. Yeah. <laughs> so Rest this is my peace. Mary Widow outfit. Rest in peace to who we lost, pouring out. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm, uh, I'm happy to see you. I know. It's so good to see your face. It's hard. We don't get it a lot anymore, but we need it. Oh, that's very sweet. Um, I miss you. Absolutely. I miss you guys so much. Um, especially my kids. You know what I yeah. mean? My little, yeah. my kids. Um, your power children. Wait, what? You're, a, you're a live power children. My live power children. Yes. Um, so I have a bunch of questions for you from the audience. Uh, I think, let's see. I thought I do. I did. Um, okay. Yeah. So uh, one person asked, uh, and then I have questions for you that I want to ask because I think the audience will like them, but one person asked, will we see how Braden's testimony affects his family dynamics? And so I wanted to tell you, ask you, how did you feel when you saw, when we gave you like, oh, Braden is going to testify. How did you feel? Uh, as, like, did I already know that I was going to have Tariq's back or not? Uh, you did not. At the end of episode nine, you were like, am I snitching? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I mean, I got real nervous because, because listen, like you can even see it on the on the Braden uh, thing. It says loyalty across his face. Like that's his best trait. And I'm like, oh my god, you're gonna take away Braden's. You know what I mean? And obviously, when you snitch in the power universe, they don't like that. You know, I was, I was, I was in the club on Sunday, and everyone was like, woo! It would have been very different if that episode came out and I snitched. Would have been boo! It would have been boo. Okay, so yeah. So how was the social media response over the weekend after the show came out for you? Well, but obviously you saw before, like when when people thought I was gonna snitch because they there was a little snippet of me in the courtroom. My DMs went crazy. People were like, "I swear to God, if you snitch, I'm unfollowing you." And I'm like, "Bro, I don't write the show. I don't write it." <laughs> <laughs> no, it's funny. Actually, I will tell you. They, I I don't know why everyone gets mad at you guys, the actors. It's me. I'm doing yeah. it. Right? I know. My Next son. time someone on the street says something to me, I'm like, okay, you got, I'm going to let you know where Courtney lives. You go talk to her. <laughs> well, it was pretty, it was pretty badass though. When you watched it back, because obviously, so you guys know, they don't see the, the, the cast doesn't see the um, episodes before they air. They're watching them for the first time the same as you guys are. Yeah. And I, so when I watched it, I literally got like, re I got really emotional. And I was like, like, I, it was so strange. I was watching. I just got like really emotional. I was like, "Wow, this is such a fucking cool scene." And yeah, I was just like, "What is happening?" I'm like, stop it, dude! Like, <laughs> you know. But it was great. I, I, I that's probably like the coolest thing I've ever done on television. Obviously, besides the um the robbery scene with Kane, which which that was great. But other than that, I'm like, that was the coolest thing I've ever done. Um. Okay. So I will tell you, I got emotional too. I always get emotional at the part, because obviously I see these episodes 400 times. Yeah. I always get emotional at the part where Brayden walks past Tariq and they make yes. eye contact. That was right when I end. started getting emotional. That's so crazy, because that's when I was like, and, he put, and uh, Brayden puts his head down, and I'm like, you know, you know who called me was uh, Toby on Raising Canaan. And he called me, he's like, dude, when you, he's like, I didn't think you would because I know, like, because he knows behind the scenes stuff and he knows that, like, we're shooting again. And he was like, I didn't think he would, but he's like, when I saw you coming in the courtroom and you put your head down, he was like, I thought he's snitching. 
And I was like, yes, okay, good. I, I, I did a nice little reversal there. It was, first of all, okay. So one thing that I, I think is people may not know, like, like you aren't in real life like Brayden. Like you're a very serious human being, like funny, yeah. but still yeah. like a very serious sort of like, like filmmaker person. Yeah. Correct. And you're making these really amazing choices. Can you talk to them a little bit about your process when you attack the char a character like Brayden? Um, the only thing that I have start to have a little bit of difficulty with Brayden, because early on, you know, he was fun. And it, that it, me and Brayden have a lot of similarities and a lot of differences. Our similarities are definitely our, you know, personalities, how we're always like, I get on set and I just want to make everyone laugh. I, I make jokes. I just want everyone in a good mood. And that's also how Brayden is like with Tariq. When Tariq is, uh, he's always down about something. Obviously, he has a lot on his plate. And Brayden's like, I just want Tariq in a good mood. And I just want to have a rush and sell drugs and have fun. So I would say that attacking Brayden uh, early on was a little easier because I'm like, oh, cool, this is dope. Like, we're just having fun. And now once he's obviously having to do the more, you know, scary, darker things. Sometimes I'll read a line and I'm with Kane or, you know, I I'm speaking with Monet and I was like, oh, this could be, this could be funny or it could be serious. So I'm, I'm having to choose now. Do I want to take the piss out of the situation and be funny? Or do I want them to take me seriously as, you know, someone who's uh, selling product and this and that? So that's kind of the, the, the struggle now I'm getting is like, you know, the seriousness to the, to the goofy brain. And I think there's a good, uh, a, a, you know, there's a good uh, mix of both, but it, it, it's, getting, it's getting like to, to be a choice, you know? I think uh, you're doing a, an incredible job. And I do think uh, it, it is, it's a difficult part. It gets to be a more difficult part as time goes on. But that's also true about life. You know, Brayden was a very sheltered kid. And so life was fun. Yeah. And now, and he made a decision. He made a call to make his life more complicated, you know? And we did talk as a joke in the room about like, you know, the scene where Brayden comes to meet Monet. We yep. did talk about like the reality is Monet would probably just shoot him. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. If I made a joke, she's like, man, that wasn't even funny. <laughs> <laughs> We did have, uh, do you remember we had a version where, uh, where uh, Brayden hit on Monet? He was like, so what's up? No, did he? Oh my God, I gotta see that script. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, so good. Um, and she's like, yeah, he's so, gotta get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> so what, um, what is your favorite? Okay, so I know that you love working with Woody. Can you talk to the audience a little, the, the you know, viewers a little bit about that? Cause I mean, he's on by the way, Woody's here. Hi, I know, I, I, I saw Woody on here. <laughs> He's like commenting stuff because people are saying stuff. But um, me and Woody have so much fun. Like I, I love working with Woody just because um, we improv a lot with each other with like jokes, like a lot of the, um, yeah, what, what, was the what was the last one from from 10? Just, just the stuff that he says, like uh, Tom Cruise and Machine Gun Kelly, like the stuff that he calls me and we just like improv and I'll be like, like, he'll pitch something to me off camera. He's like, what about this? I'm like, oh, that's funny. Like, what about this? So we kind of like a collaborative experience of like how to make fun of Raiden, you know? Um, but yeah, it, we, we just, we have a lot of fun because Woody actually, I know he's a very serious character, but he's got heavy, heavy, heavy comedy chops. So he, he brings it. Um, yeah. and, and that's what I like working with Woody. I would say that Woody is probably one of the most talented people I've ever met in my life. Yeah, Like 100%. just has the, like, has like every ability and I would say you guys I mean I, this is across the board with the cast but I would definitely say with you and with Woody I I can write something and be like man I don't know if this is it and y'all will always make it better you know who else is like that is Lorenz Lorenz will make yeah. everything better like you can give him one word and then you get a laugh out of the one goddamn word it's like how did he do that but he just he's magical and you guys are like that I love that Woody Woody, you and Woody have like, it's really special. I don't know what it is, but it's like, it's good TV, you know? Yeah, really I, have, TV. I have a question for you. When, when you originally wrote uh, Braden and Woody meeting, did you have intentions of where this is going right now? Or did you just see the scene and go, oh my God, like, yeah, we gotta, we gotta have these two link up? Um, it was, uh, let's see, the first actual meeting is the kidnapping, isn't it? 106? Uh, yeah, correct. Because he goes, you're Kane, right? Yeah. And because you say you're Kane, right? And he's like, I'm sorry, <laughs> did you just say yeah. my name, motherfucker? Yeah. Yeah. 
so um, I think, yeah, uh, I would say that episode, that particular episode, I think um, what, because we intended for it to be a long scene, that episode was really about the moment in the car where Brain says, let me go get Trace. Let me yeah. go get him. And, uh, and he's like, yeah, he's a fucking dick, but he's my brother. And Kane respects it. And so what was nice was kind of like, I thought that you guys would match each other in weight in that moment, right? Yeah. Because I think that, yeah, I, I kind of thought it would work out this way. I'm not gonna yeah. lie, I kind of thought it would work out this way. <laughs> but I also- got her feelings and she sticks with it. Yeah, but also I, I think I would say that like, all of you guys are more complicated than your characters, right? But you okay. and Woody are really serious about scripts and like the work and writing and things like that you guys are both writers as well you're both you know directors like there's more stuff in there so i feel like i could write to a darker place you know there are some people where you're you're writing to comedy you know you're writing to comedy yeah and so you guys seem to find the comedy in the really dark shit like i this wasn't a funny line but i laugh with the scene where um kane tells a brain to kill lauren and he's like, um, I'm not the, that's, that's, was it like, I'm not that guy or? Wait, which one? What Brain said, what I laughed was kind of like surprisingly when Kane was like, what I'm gonna, uh, you know what I'm gonna have to do. And I was like, to Lauren? Like, oh, you're gonna do it? And he's like, to you. Like, I laughed at that when I was watching it. Cause I was like, like, how did he make that funny? He's just telling someone he's gonna kill them and he made it funny. Because it's the magic of Woody McLean. Okay, so tell me, what have your, been your favorite scenes to shoot in all of the time you've been on Power? Because you've been on both series. So tell me, like, what's been your favorite? Um, I would say definitely um, the On the Block with Woody. That was probably one of my favorite things I've ever done. Um, the scene uh, where, we, where we did the robbery, that was a lot of fun, too. And then the courtroom scene, that was that was just cool because I it was my first time I got to work with meth. Um and I'm trying to think. Oh, oh, the oh the other scene which I love is the scene where where Woody pulls up um with the girls and he's like yes. uh, Yeah. He's like, he's like, let's uh let's go let's go hang out. And I'm like, dude, I gotta go meet Tariq. And th I forgot there was a couple improvs and alls that he did. And I wish we could show the fans them just to show how on he is. But there was like three or four alts that were still so funny. And I'm like, how does he, how does he make me laugh every take? And like, he, he would drive away and, and the girls would yell, bye. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> it was, I mean, that, that scene is, is actually pretty incredibly classic. You guys just do an amazing job. Um, all right, so those are the, the great things. Uh, I guess the only thing I would say, left is because you have writ read your character document for next season. Um, is there anything like spoiler or anything you wish we were doing? Do you want to fall in love again? Like what are the things that you feel like you want to do in this character? Um, I mean, I actually haven't read my character document. Um, I haven't gotten the whole thing. So good. But um, I mean, obviously, I want to I want to kill someone. That's like dream. That's like dream Raiden. Like I want I want to get deep in, you know, and everyone's like, Ray's got to kill someone. Ray's got to kill someone. And I'm like, okay, like even season two, people were saying that. I'm like, oh, I don't know. It's still a little early for him to just all automatically be okay with, you know, taking a life. Um, so yeah, I, I would say definitely, uh, you know, getting deeper into into that world. But yeah, I I would like to, you know, get get it an on on screen uh, romance. Those are always fun. Um, you know, that kind of stuff. There's, I, I want everyone to see like all parts of Brayden. Like I want to see how he reacts when he actually kills someone. And then want, I want to see how they react, you know, when he's actually in love and he's actually with someone. I, I just want everyone to see like the, all of him, you know? Yeah, I, I think that's, I think that's right. Well, I think some of that is coming. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna Ooh. prove it. <laughs> is it the girl? Is she cute? Is she cute? Let's hear it, Courtney. <laughs> <laughs> I am not going to say anything, but you know what? Everyone on uh, all these series is attractive. You guys know I always cast pretty people because it's like uh, it's escapism. Everybody should be, you want the best actors and then you want people to be beautiful and sexy and amazing and all that stuff. You want to turn on. Yeah, it's unfair. Stuff. Michael's got the three hottest girls on television right now and Brayden's sitting here like, when's he coming back? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're doing great. 
great next year. Let's just say that. You're doing great next year. We'll say it like <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. Um, I love you so much. I miss you so much. You're the best. Thank you for doing this. I love this you, Courtney. Me. Thank you for having me. We love you. You are the queen of the power universe, and you um, created something that will be remembered forever. Um, so I love you so much, and uh, I will definitely see you soon. Absolutely. Bye, Courtney. Bye -bye. I love you. Love you. Okay, I'm going to get back into these questions. I'm going to get back into these questions. Uh, let's see. Okay. All right. What is here? Okay. Um, trying to see if there is any. Okay. Um, whoa, wait, what made us decide to kill off Zeke? Okay. Great. So King Den 22 asked that. What made you decide to kill off Zeke? Um, well, here's the thing about the big deaths at the end of the, the end of the season. So what we ask ourselves at the beginning of the season is who, you know, who are the innocent? <laughs> I know that sounds terrible. But if you think about it, if you are like a hardcore power fan, if you look back, we always kind of off someone who is an innocent because the reality of the drug game is that people get hurt. There is collateral damage. It's not always just the bad actors who get uh, hurt. I don't mean bad actor like performer. I mean a person who is uh, like actually like a bad guy. The villains don't always just get hurt. The, it's, they hurt bystanders all the time. So I think that that's a really important, you know, that's like an important thing um, to say. But and so who are the true innocents in our world? Well, obviously, Reyna was one of the innocents. <laughs> but uh, and so that is a person who died. Sean was an innocent. If you go back, um, he was very innocent. Um, I'm not going to say that people who are Holly, not innocent, Angela, not innocent, all those things. But I would argue, and some of you would argue with me, but I think Lakeisha in a lot of ways was, was an innocent. She was somebody who got caught up in like the wrong situation. So a lot of times toward eight or nine, we will, uh, eight, nine or 10, we will actually kill someone who is an innocent. Um, this year also, and though the, I know you guys would make a different argument, this year I would also argue that uh, Lauren is in some ways an innocent. She's just not from the game. So she makes the wrong decisions. Um, okay, so let's see. Um, okay, Mike Florent asks Kemp, can my guy Tariq get a break from the courtroom, please? Uh, he's referring to the last uh, scene with uh, Blanca. Um, I love that you guys already see that Tariq is going to be in trouble, but I don't know that he's necessarily going to be. We'll see if it gets all the way to a courtroom. Um, it might. It might not. We'll see. What we do know is that Tariq did not kill Mecca, right? We know that he didn't. So it's just a question of whether or not Monet is implicated. Lisa Brooklyn 11216 is asking, when is Sax going to power heaven? Shane is on uh, this live right now. So y'all uh, are hating. Poor baby. Uh, and, you know, I'm not going to answer that. Uh, Dezel Smith asks, is Brayden invited to the cookout at the Tejadas for holding it down in court? I love that you guys uh, have Brayden as everybody's favorite white boy right now. Don't leave Tommy out of that also. Okay. Um, I am Titus Showers asked, why wasn't Braden arrested for admitting he was the drug dealer? If you guys remember, he had immunity. He got immunity in the, in the scene at his parents' house. His lawyer uh, said he can only, Trace can only testify if both Braden and Trace get immunity. So he had immunity. That's why he did what he did. He was very smart. Uh, Cole Harden says, uh, asked, did Davis only hire Sachs to get his brother out of prison? Yes, that is correct. Um, <clears throat> okay. Let's see. Uh, a M M M O asks, um, only you can give us this insight. Does Monet have a feeling Lorenzo killed Zeke? No, not yet. But she only finds out about it in the last few seconds. So that's really important. Um, OK, let's see. I'm going to go over here. Uh, someone asked, can I explain Lauren's death, death more in depth? Um, I can explain what happened in terms of just the pieces, which were um, Tariq told Effie that he, uh, that Lauren had sworn a wire on him. Uh, she went to Kane and said that was unacceptable, ratted out, even though Tariq said to Effie, don't tell anyone this. Um, and unfortunately, that's what happened. 
Uh, so, um, I am Leslie Shondale says, is Bruce Chandria going to return? I think she needs to have a major part in the power universe. Uh, Life and Keisha is amazing. I wish I could have like a much bigger story. At one point, we actually broke a whole story uh, for her where she became kind of involved in Course Correct. And we decided to move away from that in part because I feel like not every person of color at the uh, at Stansfield should be involved in Course Correct. <laughs> so she is a customer, not part of it. Um, let's see. Uh, v Mills says, I know Lorenzo wasn't a fan of Tariq, but with him helping him in the shootout, will he have newfound respect for him? Well, he Lorenzo also knows that Diana went to bed with Tariq. Never going to be his favorite person, okay? Because that was his little girl, and he doesn't like Tariq from the beginning. So, no. Okay. Um, let's get back to more questions. Uh, why, what, why did you guys bring Blanca back? I think I answered that, but just to say that I always want someone to be pursuing uh, Tariq. And, um, yes. Io Major, are you adding another girl to the classroom since Lauren is gone? Uh, yes. Yes, I can answer that question. Yes, we are higher. Uh, the first part of that question, are we adding another girl? Uh, we are definitely adding another girl. Uh, uh, have y'all started to shoot season three? Yes, they just started. Uh, let's see. Um, Romario Melbourne, Stansfield is literally on fire. Two professors and two students are dead. You know what? Next season is going to be real interesting over there. Uh, okay. Um... Ooh, this is a big question. Someone asked, where did you, well, I want to know, how did you get the idea for power and what are the hard parts? Well, a lot of you guys know where I got the idea from power. So I, I'm not going to really address that other than you guys know that it's about being a black man in America at that particular time and how, um, and basically like why Ghost believed that he had to do this in order to get to achieve his goals. A lot of it comes from that. Obviously, the character is a combination of my dad and 50 Cent. I think all of you guys know that. But in terms of what are the hard parts, the hardest part about these shows and this series, and I think that Sasha would also say this, but you'd have to ask him directly, is you've got to keep the um, power dynamics, literally the power dynamics, shifting all the time. So backwards and forwards. So it, the person who has the upper hand in each scene has to leave without it and vice versa. Um, and those are more difficult maneuvers to do. Also, you guys are really, really smart. The, the audience is really smart. So if you are, um, if you cheat or you lie or you don't tell the truth in terms of the storytelling, you guys will, will catch it right away. So you really have to kind of be true to the story. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, Flexsmith official asked who taught Effie the drug game? There were a lot of you guys who were speculating that Mecca was Effie's plug. No, that is not true. Effie is not related to Mecca. None of that was true. I didn't say that during the, the course of the season, but none of that was actually at all accurate. I think sometimes, again, people assume things because of how actors look, but you cast the best actor and sometimes they favor each other. Yes, I absolutely think that Daniel Tanjada and Alex Lepre could play father and daughter in something, but they're not. <laughs> none of that is real. And Tariq is definitely not. I had someone, Someone literally say to me, is Tariq uh, Mecca's nephew and is Effie his daughter? And I'm like, incest? That's what we're doing? Come on, no, y'all. No, we're not doing incest. That's not how that works. <laughs> so no. Okay. Uh, M. Tierra, does Tariq become more ruthless after giving his sister to his mom? Uh, he's going to go through some changes. He's going to be really, really alone. Um, okay. Dondre, uh, uh uh, El Jefe asks, will Diana find out that Effie and Tariq are getting serious? Watch season three. Someone else just asked, can Effie be trusted? What y'all think? Can Effie be trusted? Uh, Effie can be trusted to do what's best for everyone. Uh, let's see. Uh, Roro Jocko six says, will Tariq ever catch a W? He'll be, he seems to be caught in a cycle right now. So about catching Ws, here's the thing about catching Ws. We show small victories, not big victories. So for example, Tariq was faced with Mecca. Mecca should have killed him in that scene, but Tariq knew too much and was smart enough to hide the bag. So he got a W, he got out of there. We show a lot of small Ws. Big W was that he didn't go to jail for killing Jabari Reynolds, which he actually should have. Um, I know that would make a bad show, but I'm just saying he gets away with a lot of stuff too. Um, okay. 
Beautiful D. Um, D is my mom's nickname, so I like that. Uh, Beautiful D asks, what was my favorite scene to shoot? They're all my favorite in different ways, but I think I love, I love anything that is like emotional. So, uh, and emotion come from different places, um, but I, have, I am a big fan in terms of shooting stuff uh, when I'm on set. I guess I really enjoy things like the dinner scene in 208 like with lots of different people and different emotional things and beats and stuff like that. That's kind of um, like a symphony when you have a scene like that. It's kind of like a symphony. It's kind of like it has movements, it has shape, it has to keep moving, it has to keep its rhythm. Um, so, you know, uh, that's kind of my favorite thing because I like to be on set for that. Um, Someone just said, last thing made me cry. Rogue Damp said, last thing made me cry and I hate Tasha. I don't know why you hate Tasha, but I don't like that you hate Tasha, but I'm glad that it worked. Um, ooh, couple questions in here that are dead on, but I can't answer. Um, let's see. A lot of Will Tariq find out that Brayden lied and that Effie took Lauren. You're gonna have to watch. Uh, again, someone's at Camera Girl 1214. Why is Tariq always walking around and everybody else has a car? I think I've addressed this already, but you guys know. Uh, you, you guys know that he is a Manhattanite. He's born and bred in Manhattan. And so therefore, not a, not a driver, not a full-time driver. Uh, I am the body sniper asked, why am I so dope? That's very sweet. I really appreciate that. You know, it's funny, I, um, I hadn't done a lot of these lives and it is interesting to see how many people just want to tell you how ugly you are or like what's wrong with you. But so it's really nice that you got, some of you are really, really lovely. I appreciate that. It's really nice. Um, Brown underscore goddess said, I'm pissed. Don't know why you're angry, but you know, sorry about it. Um, let's see, okay. Um, let's see if there are any other questions. Um, no Insta name underscore said, uh, was it a specific reason for Tariq asked Kane why is he always worried about him? Because he is. And because Kane needs to stop worrying about Tariq all the time. He needs to stop being focused outside and focus on making himself better. <laughs> How about that? Uh, okay, let's see. Any, anything else? Um, uh, oh, this is a good question. Uh, oh, well, actually, this is a good question. Why uh, are y'all ever gonna have a Southern character from Power, like someone from Memphis or ATL? You know, at one point we talked about doing a Power that was set in Atlanta. Like we did actually have a conversation about that at one point. Um, I think you know, obviously, I'm not there anymore. But if they expand the series, uh, there was a conversation years ago um, about putting a, a version of power in different uh, cities. Uh, okay. Let's see if anything, uh, anything else. Um, a lot of people asking for auditions, obviously. Uh, ooh, Shay Co. will Kane and Reek finally uh, team up? Hmm. Watch season three. That's what I'm gonna say. All right, so in our last couple uh, minutes, I guess, uh, I want to say that next week I'm going to be doing a live, hopefully, with a bunch of our characters who are deceased. So our, you know, power from beyond the grave. Uh, so I'm looking for that. Um, let's see. Will we find more about Davis and his brother's case? Yes, we're going to find out more about that. Uh, someone asked his time on Lorenzo's side. That's the face I'm going to make. I'm just going to say he needs to keep one step ahead of his wife finding out what he did. Um, and I'm going to end with this because I think this is actually such a great question. Let me just make sure there aren't any live questions that I need to get this. Um, are there any other live questions that I need to grab? Well, we find out if Tariq is related to either Lorenzo or Dante. Um, he's not. Uh, that we don't actually need to, we don't need to make the characters related in order to do that. Um, why didn't Yaz call Tariq? Uh, you guys are asking about Yaz's burner and whether or not she still has it. You're going to find that out, I think, in season three. Um, okay. Will Tariq and Effie be able to build a new relation, a real relationship, or will Diana ruin that? Come on, you guys. Have I ever let anybody have a real relationship? Don't I always mess them up? I mean, Ghost and Angela were really in love. Did that work out? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm cynical about love. Probably. Probably cynical. Uh, trying to get better about it, though. 
Um, okay, I'm gonna end with this question because I really, oh, hi, Toya. I, I wanna shout out all the cast from all the shows that showed up. Peyton Ashbrook was here. Woody McLean was here. Toya's here. Chris Lofton is here. I think Alex Laprie was here also at one point. Um, this last question. Interesting that Reek wanted out of the game just like his father, my thoughts. Um, and I'll close with this. You know, a lot of you guys are constantly talking about ghosts um, coming back. And without going into like super detail, what I will definitely say is that part of why I started writing this show is about my father's death. I think a lot of you guys know that. Um, and the thing about that and what I'm really trying to kind of demonstrate is that Tariq is ghost on earth. Tariq is ghost alive. He is learning things and, and changing before our very eyes. Just as Michael Rainey is as an actor getting deeper and better and um, like, he's so amazing and I know you guys are seeing that. Tariq as a man, he's growing into a man. And so, I mean, my dad's not here, but I like to say, I like to think that I'm his representative on earth, that his story is still continuing through me. Um, you know, it was funny, I, I just put on all the makeup and I was coming downstairs to do this and I look like my auntie, um, my, my aunt Johnny, who is the mom of my cousin Trina, Brown Betty Yako, who's on here sometimes, um, and my cousin Melissa and my cousin Aaron. And um, Aaron, Trina and Melissa, by the way, are Tasha's cousins. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but that's actually the names of her cousins too. Um, they're still here, they're still with us. Uh, and I think we try to live our lives uh, and make the people who brought us here proud. So uh, that being said, hopefully I'll see you guys next week for uh, Power Beyond the Grave. Uh, and I love you guys so much. I deeply appreciate you. Thank you so much for joining tonight. And uh, I'll see you on the other side. Bye.